while negotiations continue excuse me, at the U.N. COP26 uh, climate summit in Glasgow this week. The U.N. Secretary General warns that despite the pledges from global leaders to do better, the world is, and I quote, careening towards climate catastrophe. So are the G20's commitments enough and what can be done? That's right. So joining us is the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Ms. Amina Mohammed. Uh, Ms. Mohammed, thank you for being with us. We've heard those dire warnings. Uh, this, they couldn't be clearer. What are you hoping comes out of this conference? And uh, with what's possible, will that be enough to change our trajectory? Well, what we're hoping is that the promises of Paris are kept, and as we go to um, Glasgow, um, that work around the ambition of um, getting to net zero by 2050 um, is committed to in very real terms. We saw some of our uh, reporting from our David Muir about Madagascar on the verge, I guess, of uh, uh, the world's first climate-induced famine. And there's uh, the hopes of a $100 billion annual climate financing for places like Madagascar. How are we on that goal? And uh, what would you like to see that goal uh, ultimately be? Uh, would you like to see it grow? Well, first of all, the 100 billion commitment is a handshake. Um, it is to bring the world together to say that we are serious about fin uh, financing uh, the transition to green economies, which will give us the 1.5 degree world. We haven't attained that yet, um, and it should have been done two years ago. It's an annual commitment. Um, and what we are saying is actually the 100 billion is just the very beginning and what we need is trillions. Bring the financing that's needed into these economies so that they can do the restoration that is needed to, as you see, the drought stricken land, um, that it becomes not just about restoring um, a green environment, but it also becomes about jobs, it becomes about the connectivity, it becomes about um, a power that is renewable. So a really big investment in, in a just transition um, to, to a future uh, that we can deal um, with the effects of climate change. Yeah, and, and those effects were just undeniable and, and so difficult to even to, to witness and to see what's happening there in Madagascar. But you grew up in Nigeria, Ms. Mohammed. Can you talk a little bit about how you have personally witnessed the devastation of climate change in your country, where you come from? Many, I mean, I, have, I come from a country in Nigeria where climate um, change has happened in so many different parts of the country differently. Uh, I grew up in the northeast of Nigeria where now we have uh, conflict and terrorism. The, the Lake Chad um, used to span um, hundreds and thousands um, of, 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 of meters in, in, in water, huge uh, 40 million people um, uh, economy. Uh, which has now been reduced to, to almost nothing. It's a shadow of itself. Um, and what we have there is not just uh, the effects of climate change, losing economies, uh, conflict and, and terrorism there, but all the effect of this is on women, it is on children. We have had a focus right now, uh, or the past week, of course, on, on climate change, but we, we've been showing our viewers a lot of, uh, been a lot of stories about what they can do at home and small changes they can make to help the environment, help the climate. But you also want to remind people they can still, every single one of us can use our voice. How? Well, for, for us, the voice is loud, look, very loud in COP right now. We, we have got Vanessa, we've got Greta. These are civil society activists. There's an intergenerational transition happening right now. Young people um, are taking action. Um, and they are pressuring government. And they're being very, very uh, pointed at where that message needs to land. 80% uh, just over um, of the emissions today are coming from the G20. We know the countries in the G20, uh, they can target their parliamentarians, they can target business and industry in those countries to start to make um, those, uh, to, to start to make those transitions. Um, and we say just here because every transition will be painful and it's important that as you lose jobs, you create new ones um, and that, and that uh, young people and those with existing jobs are able to transition. The implications of not taking action is really important to impart that knowledge to those decision makers who sometimes are a little isolated from this and see it perhaps only in a resolution or a negotiation. Um, you know, we need to emphasize uh, to every negotiator, to every decision maker, that every time they cross a T and they dot an I, that's lives lost. Um, it's the opportunity to save lives, it's the opportunity to invest in a transition, but when they don't do the right thing, they don't cross the right T and dot the right I, um, that's lives lost. That's us further away from a 1.5 degree world.
Oh my goodness. Deputy Secretary um, uh, General of the United Nations, Ms. Amina Muhammad, we thank you for your time, your voice, and for your passion. And we absolutely hope you come back on the program. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.